a way to save for later. Um, and anyone that wasn't able to join us uh, will be able to do so through the recorded session. Okay. Um, so Workforce Windsor Essex, um, which is able to uh, support this session today, is a workforce and community development board whose mission is to lead regional employment and community planning for the development of a strong and sustainable workforce. To learn more about what we do and how we can help you, please visit WorkforceWindsorEssex.com. So while this event is virtual, we would like to respectfully acknowledge that the land on which we gather today is the traditional territory of the Three Fires Confederacy of First Nations, comprised of the Ojibwe, the Odawa, and the Potawatomi peoples. We are grateful to work, learn, and live in this area. This event is all about learning what careers are available in the tourism and hospitality sector. What does it look like to work in this sector and how, can, how it can be a sustainable career in Windsor, Essex? Our goal today is to celebrate local workers using their stories as learning opportunities. And now just for a few housekeeping items, um, in order to be considerate of everyone's time and accommodate with uh, social distancing, we are doing things differently with the Zoom webinar. Um, so while you won't be able to see the other attendees on the call, you will have time to engage with other guests and attendees uh, during our Q&A session. So uh, please feel free to also uh, use the chat feature located at the bottom of the video window uh, to engage with any attendees. Throughout the whole session, you can submit questions uh, using the Q&A box as well at the bottom of your screen. Um, if you have any tech difficulties, uh, please send a message in the chat box as well. Like I mentioned, this session uh, is being recorded and uh, all video and audio files will be shared on our YouTube channel. We're also uh, going to be streaming it onto Facebook later as well. So finally, I would like to welcome our speakers today, uh, Lynette Bain, Billy Alexander, Kelly Gregor, and Dharmesh Patel. So I'm going to introduce each of them individually. Uh, so Lynette Bain is the Vice President of Destination Development for Tourism Windsor Essex Peely Island, uh, also known as TWEBI, and has been with the organization for 10 years. Lynette is responsible for the administrative functions of the organization, as well as carrying out the mandate of visitor services, product development, tourism programming, and stakeholder relations. As part of her role at TWEBI, Lynette has been involved in the organization and coordination of both international national and provincial events, leading teams of hospitality professionals, as well as developing award-winning tourism programs with her team. Prior to joining TWEPI, Lynette spent 12 years in the hospitality industry, most recently holding the position of general manager for the Holiday Inn in Suites Windsor with Fortis Properties. During her time in the hospitality industry, Lynette became very involved with various industry associations, serving as chair for the Rin Windsor Region ORMA and an ORMA Provincial Association board member as well as three years serving on the board for tourism, Windsor Essex, Peely Island, with a term as chair in 2010. Lynette graduated from the University of Windsor with a Bachelor of Commerce and e Economics co-op degree in 1999, and has since earned her master's certificate in municipal leadership. So welcome, Lynette. Uh, next, we'll introduce Billy Alexander, who is a globally renowned and trained chef, tourism ambassador, cultural pundit, and social advocate, and the director of programs for Culinary Tourism Alliance. His illustrious accomplishments and positions include recurring national television appearances, founding chair of Indigenous Culinary of Associated Nations, culinary development chef for WestJet, recipient of Canadian Culinary Excellence Award, Calgary's Top 40 Under 40, advisory board not nine to five, as well as former national culinary strategist for Indigenous Tourism Association of Canada, and current mentor to countless youth. Billy grew up with food being synonymous with Indigenous communities. He first learned to cook from his mother with ingredients that were provided from the land. His, he views the land as the original grocery store. He formed some of his fondest memories gathered around food with family and community. So welcome, Billy. Uh, next up, I will introduce uh, Kelly Gregor, who has uh, 25 plus years uh, worked in highly regulated industries across the globe. Her career includes operations, continuous improvement, and quality systems, with the majority of her career focused in human resources. Nine years ago, she joined Caesars Windsor as Vice President of Human Resources, where she has responsibility for activities such as recruitment, benefits, employee engagement, training, and development, labor relations, and health and safety. 
In addition to working at Caesars, Kelly is a sessional instructor at the University of Windsor, is a board member of the United Way of Windsor Essex County, and chairs their Board Equity, Diversity, Inclusion, and Belonging Committee. Kelly earned her Bachelor of Commerce and MBA from the University of Windsor, a certificate in lean manufacturing from the University of Michigan, and is a Six Sigma black belt. She lives in Amherstburg uh, with one husband, two daughters, and three demanding pets. And last but not least, uh, we have Dharmesh Patel, who uh, has been in the hospitality industry for most of his life, spending uh, most of his career in Leamington, operating several different motels and hotels as part of the family business. He studied business with a major in accounting at Brock University and has worked for various corporations, such as the City of Windsor and CRS Robotics and Accounting roles. Currently, his family owns and operates the award-winning Quality in Leamington, as well as the newly renovated and award-winning Holiday Inn Express and Suites in Woodstock. In his free time, Darmesh tries to spend as much time as possible with his wife, Alexi, and, three, and their three children ranging in age from six to 17. He also sits on the uh, PAC for St. Clair College and is the chair of the Windsor Region ORMA and, has, and recently was awarded an Apex Award by Choice Hotels Canada. Uh, Darmesh also sponsors a soccer team and coaches as well and is an outspoken advocate for the town on social media. Um, so I think that's definitely enough talking for me. Um, so I'm going to open it up to our panelists and just start with, how did you find yourself in your current role? Um, I'm actually gonna start with Billy. How did you find yourself in your position? Yeah, thanks, Tashlin. Um, so interestingly enough for me, um, <clears throat> I did like many people um, did during COVID, the pandemic kind of shocked our industry, shocked uh, what tourism and, and uh, hospitality look like as an overall. And, and I found myself um, at kind of a crossroads. I had had a super successful career uh, throughout my life as a chef and it took me all around the world, gave me a lot of experience from the tourism side, but interestingly enough, gave me uh, next to no preparation for what it would take to, to or, or no lived experience in terms of thinking that we would ever even encounter a pandemic. So I took a step back myself in my career and said, you know, where do I think uh, I'm of most use at, at this point in my career? Is it using my experience that I've accounted for uh, th throughout the years to for one specific restaurant or one employer? Or is it more entwined of using uh, all the various different experiences that I've had, uh, different countries, different provinces, different areas, different challenges, um, to, to look to really be an active and crucial part of, of rebuilding what culinary tourism could look like. Uh, so that is what has uh, found me. It's been a long uh, work in progress. I was a board member for the Culinary Tourism Alliance and had um, resigned from that position to take an active uh, uh, position as director of programs, overseeing all programs for Culinary Tourism Alliance and really being actively involved um, with the rebuilding of the uh, and, and helping and mentoring in the culinary tourism industry as a whole. That's great to hear how there's such a variety in what you can do within tourism and specifically in just the culinary studies that you've kind of done that whole gamut. So it's really great to see there's lots of different options within that. Yeah, yeah, there, 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 really, there really is on, on that note with it, you know, we're, we're in an industry right now where we're seeing like many, uh, we're an industry driven by people. And, and when we're talking about rebuilding hospitality, I think that's gonna be a crucial point as to humanizing, uh, uh, humanizing the brand and bringing the people back out in front and center. And, and this position is really gonna allow me to, to help in that scenario, so. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Lynette, I'm going to go to you next as also someone who's working in kind of a supportive role for the industry. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, how do I get to my current position? I've been here for so long now, Tashlin, it's funny. Um, but uh, prior to being with Tourism Windsor Essex, I was in the hotel business and had the chance to interact with a lot of associations. Um, as I mentioned in my bio, was, I worked with Ontario Restaurant Hotel Motel Association. I had worked with um, the Chamber and a few different other organizations uh, throughout my career in the hotels and, and also sat on the board for Tourism Windsor Essex and realized there was a lot that I could do um, working with small business to help them to develop their own 
own tourism product, ensure that the organization was uh, sustainable, because that's a big part of what I do is making sure that, okay, we've got the funding to con continue on into the future, uh, that we've got programs that are going to bring money in and provide return on investment to stakeholders. So I saw that there was a lot of opportunity um, in our region to further develop and we've seen some amazing things happen in the last 10 years um, and, and really seen the caliber of the stakeholder increase and, and what kind of products they're delivering to the market. So that was what got me to where I am. And I think that the fact that I had a background in finance as well as hospitality really gave me that versatility to uh, bring some transferable skills over. Um, and so I, I really think that strong background for me in business um, as well as the hotel side uh, was what made this position possible. Yeah, I wanna uh, keep that thought for skills. We're gonna touch on that um, a bit later, but it's really interesting again, like Billy's story of how you can go from working in uh, kind of the front lines of the industry um, and then going into a more supportive kind of umbrella role. It's really interesting. Um, you mentioned a lot about hotels. So I'm gonna go over to Dharmesh um, just to hear about how you got to kind of the caliber that you're at now with owning hotels. So um, I guess I was kind of thrown into it, a uh, family business uh, when I was six, started in housekeeping, worked my way up. Um, in high school, when most kids were playing sports and you know going to parties, I was actually running a motel. Um, so that was, that was those were my summers. And to be honest, I always hated holidays, just because any PA days or anything like that, I knew I'd have to work at the motel and I wouldn't be able to do anything. Snow days were the worst. Most kids would be outside, I'd be shoveling. Those kids would be out there uh, making snowman. But you know what? Over over the years, um, I've I've come to meet a lot of people. Um, and we went, you know, we slowly grew from motels to hotels. Um, and my brother and I, uh, after our dad passed away about 10 years ago, you know, we, we looked at getting out of the business, but uh, we, we didn't really like anything else. I mean, he did some other things. I did some other things. Um, but yeah, in the end, we all, we came back just because it's the people, uh, like Billy said, that, uh, that really make, that make my day, you know, worth living. And, and, uh, and I tell my staff as well that, um, you know, the best part about this job is you, it's never the same. Like we do have our set um, duties, uh, I guess you'd say, but, um, but each day is different. Like you never know what's going to happen, who you're going to meet. And, and the world, and Lynette will probably agree with me, the world truly is a small place. You never know who you're going to run into and then make that connection um, on any corner. But uh, yeah, our current hotel, believe it or not, this was the first hotel I actually did in my co high school co-op in. Um, so for me to come back 25 years later and, and buy it, you know, it was, it was awesome. Um, I walked in and the, the first day we had a staff meeting, um, the one housekeeper, she'd been there since the first day and she gave me a hug afterwards and she whispered in my ear and she said, you know, one day I knew you'd take over this place. So, I mean, that was awesome to hear. Um, but yeah, uh, we're all about the people and service and, um, although we could branch out and, and, and expand and, you know, own multiple hotels, our, our key to success has always been customer service. And that's, we've been able to provide that by being hands-on operators. So, um, currently we have two hotels. My brother and I also have a management company. So we manage another hotel out in Saskatchewan. Um, but I think that's it for now. We're building a third one. Um, but for me, that's it. Uh, after the pandemic, I've come to realize that, you know, family and time with them is far more important than, than just work and, and money. But uh, hospitality is definitely the key. With my current role in Orma, uh, you know, we took over OHI and, uh, and that's gonna be a key to bringing these kids back into, um, into the hospitality industry because we really need people to make it successful. Yeah, and I think what you highlighted there is a lot of people just write off their first job, but there's a chance it's going to come back and kind of be the key. So it's really interesting uh, for students to explore some early opportunities. Um, talking about kind of serving people, um, I'm going to spin it a bit and jump to Kelly. Um, as you serve kind of both uh, your clients within the hotel um, in HR, so how did you end up in that position? 
Um, thank you. So, you know, as, as I, every time I have the chance to think about working here, I always go back to university uh, because I was graduating when uh, Caesars opened. And I remember watching uh, how wild it was uh, in those days. And it was pretty exciting as a student to, uh, to see, you know, the, the, the potential. And, and um, it wasn't the right timing then. But over the years, wherever I've worked, Windsor's always been my home base. And, uh, and to see it grow from, you know, the, they, they, you know, the boat, if anybody remembers, you know, those days that, that we were on the water uh, to, you know, adding uh, a second hotel to adding uh, the Coliseum, you know, it's, it, it became like sort of this, this, this mecca for, for Windsor, such a, such an uh, broad, broad entertainment experience for people. And um, fortunately that, you know, the opportunity did did become available and what really uh, intrigued me was one just the, the breadth of what we do here I found that really fascinating and also um, looking back over my nine years what I don't think I really appreciated enough then but I, I definitely do now is what we do um, impacts our customer today and you know I've, I've worked in, in manufacturing or in other service sectors where maybe you know you make something or you do something and it gets given to somebody else or it's sold to somebody else who sells it you know and it ends up eventually in a store or in a car or whatever it is but what we do is with the customer you know today we see you know immediately the impact that we can have on people and uh and i absolutely love that part of what we do in our business i think that that is just something pretty 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 special and um what i, what I really appreciate about working in this industry um, so now just for those listening in, now that you've kind of heard their stories a little bit, feel free to jump in with any questions that you have uh, for each of them. Um, I am going to throw it back to Dermesh because you mentioned not every day is the same, um, but I'm going to ask you, what would you say, a how would you describe a typical day in your position? So in my position specifically, um, it's all over the place. Uh, it basically begins at 7 a.m. and there's an even though this end time is supposed to be set at three o'clock, but it never ends. Lynette can attest to that. Uh, we get pulled in multiple different directions, but typically if, if it's a smooth, perfect day, then, you know, you're reviewing reports from the night before. Um, Pre-pandemic, obviously, um, you take a stroll into the breakfast room, you know, try to try to interact with the guests, which is a, which is a key part of that I look forward to. Um, and then other than that, you're just dealing with you know, any fires that got to be put out um, and making sure that you're trying to put as many heads as you can into the beds. Uh, Billy, I'm going to throw to you next to describe uh, what a typical day would look like. Yeah, you know, it's an amazing question because uh, it's, it changes every single day. I would say a good part of my day is, um, a good part of my day is, is to outreach with restaurants. Um, I, you know, I get my day changes every single day as well because the restaurants and and, and things that we're working on um, changes. Whether it's outreach for new programs we're starting or actually just uh, uh, check-ins to see how people are doing and the and the areas. You know, Culinary Tourism Alliance is a not-for-profit organization that is is into the supporting uh, aspect as much as it is the promoting aspect. So. When you're navigating through uh, a pandemic and, and what day to day looks like, it could be anything from uh, the marketing side of things to better how to promote right to the to like linking people in our network within each other to suppliers for somebody looking for a new uh, organic local chicken product. It could be everything in between. Um, but I would say, you know, something that is kind of like the elephant in the room is I would say a good part of a good part of my day is trying to figure out how we're going to do things differently. A lot of the situations that we're in right now, especially in the hospitality and tourism side of things with it have as much to do food is just the conduit how we got there is is part of that issue so whether that's like proper payment for people like no poverty living wages like better hours how we're going to create these are all things that we're thinking about so a good portion of my day is trying to figure out how to be different and be the change that we're talking about 
trying to achieve. And, and when you've been in the industry, I've, I was a chef uh, for 25 years and you realize you've agreed to a lot of things that were bad for the industry. And in some ways you enforce things that were bad for the industry. And, and uh, that was a product that changed. So a good portion of my time is probably, I'd like to say whatever non-existent free time is trying to think about how we can be different um, and, and what we need to do to change to be um, the workforce and the career path that, that this industry deserves. Yeah, it's really interesting that you get to kind of use your perspective from working um, as a chef and uh, kind of use it for good and later on and trying to make those positive changes for everyone else. Yeah, it's good to draw from your own experience. I've, I've challenged everybody. I, like I've said this, Lynette's heard me say this before, but but I, I would say to everybody in your respective careers and going, going into these careers, especially with it, like to ask yourself if, if you're like uh, successful because of the system or in spite of the system. And, and depending on your answer, I'll let you know where you wanna like put your effort into trying to change those things. And I'm really fortunate after this long to, to and still hopefully, you know, a long career ahead of me to, to be really focused on solely how to impact in a positive way. That's great to hear. Uh, Kelly, I'll throw to you next to describe your typical day. Ah, I, I think that, the, you know, you're, there's a common theme here is there is no, <laughs> there is no typical day. I can't, you know, expect, you know, my Mondays look like this and Tuesdays look like this. Um, so yeah, it is very, you know, it, it does very much change. And, um, and that is I probably one thing I think as Dermesh mentioned about our, 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 um, career here is that, you know, the, it, the time of day also changes too. So uh, it's not just uh, uh, seven to three or, or eight to four or whatever, whatever that may be. Um, but that's, that's kind of cool too, is, you know, there's, there's some flexing there. Um, if I can maybe put some buckets around work that, you know, typically happens, although it, you know, it can flow in, in it, it rears up in different ways as, you know, staffing is a big part of what I, I do every day. So there's something about, you know, do we have enough staff? Um, are there um, improvements to scheduling that we should be doing? Um, so um, is there, is there um, something around uh, holes or gaps that we have where, you know, we can, are anticipating that we're going to be having to do some recruitment um, so lo lots of work, lots of work around staffing and, and, and of course, um, you know, especially with COVID about what staff do we have available to get the work done that's in front of us today too. So helping, helping manage that. Right. So, um, so that's a big part. Uh, there's, you know, financials is a big part. I think that, um, in almost any position and, and touching on Lynette's point about, you know, having financial experience has helped her along uh, with all with her career. Um, I think that in almost position any position within um, tourism and hospitality, having some foundation around finance is important and whether that's understanding it so you know what supplies you need to order and what the impact is of those supplies, um, or, um, you know, or, or anything from being able to read a, a, a p &L report or whatever. That's, that, that is a, a big task. And so it is a, a lot of what I do during the day as well is something around financial. So, you know, again, you know, looking at uh, uh, whether, you know, it's budgets or, or um, spend. Um, and an, another big piece is people. So just, you know, trying to either, you know, help folks resolve an issue or help them, um, uh, with just, you know, regular people, people stuff or uh, answer questions or just, you know, just be helpful to them in whatever way is possible. Those are, you know, probably three, three big buckets for me every day. Yeah, I think so far kind of three for three, what I'm hearing is if you kind of like to be surprised every day you walk into work, this is kind of the industry for you. Um, and I'll throw it to you lastly, uh, to Lynette. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's one of the biggest draws to this industry is you're not uh, reporting to the same station every day to do the same thing. Um, and that, that is what makes it great. It, it is important, though, though we do know these surprises come up that uh, there's a lot of planning that takes place. So if we if we fail to plan, we plan to fail. And uh, I would refer back to my hotel days. Um, it would be easy to come in and get swept away and be the entire day uh, be at the mercy of whatever happens to you. And uh, something that was really important lesson for me to learn was to make sure that I planned some things in there each day so that 
a, a day didn't get carried away on me like that to make sure that I spend budget some time to go up and, and make beds or um, check in some guests at the front desk, um, talk to my maintenance staff, just budgeting in those, those times so that uh, I would make sure that those things that were really important, but not urgent, got taken care of so they didn't become urgent. And uh, I think that's something that's really important to drill into the mindset is even though, yes, the schedule is flexible, uh, we have to, to plan for some of those things to ensure some consistency. I mean, in my role right now with Tourism Windsor Essex, we're a destination marketing organization. So we do support the tourism industry. Um, as you can Im imagine, uh, a lot of the uh, tasks that I do are project-based. So it all depends on the, the cycle of the project that I'm working in, um, what the deadlines might be. But then there are some regular um, structured duties that, that come into play uh, with regards to, as Kelly said, the financials. Um, and then working with my team, helping them to plan. So starting out the day with a team meeting, um, getting everybody on the same page, seeing what's, what's up for the day, what's up for this day, the next three days, the next five days, making sure we're on top of it. And then um, monthly meetings with the team um, to look at their work plans to uh, make sure we're on task with whatever our annual plans are or our strategic plans and making sure everything aligns. And when we have to make decisions, making sure they align with whatever those plans are and those strategic directions are. So everyone's day sounds incredibly busy. <laughs> Um, but I'm going to stick with you, Lynette, before you mentioned, um, kind of hinted at a couple skills that are really important. Um, but I'm wondering if you can expand on what are, what would you define as kind of the main skills uh, to, in order to be successful in your position? So I would say looking at, uh, I could talk about the finance piece, um, because um, I think numbers really play, even though we're talking tours and people think, oh, your job, people say to me all the time, oh, you have the most fun job. You get to drink wine all day. I'm like, yeah, no, <laughs> I wish. Uh, it is fun for sure. There's a lot of fun elements, but uh, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes to make sure an organization can be sustainable, organized um, and successful. So uh, what's, what's important on that skill set is um, having good you know, decision-making, reasoning skills, planning skills, um, and being able, as Kelly mentioned, to uh, analyze financials, uh, you're going to use a lot of spreadsheets, even though there's so many software solutions, um, nothing beats Excel. And that's, you might hate it now going through all these programs, but uh, I was having a conversation with our director of marketing and communications the other day, and uh, he was saying, I never thought, uh, you know, studying marketing or advertising that I'd have to do so many budgets and understand them. And it was, he was glad actually that he had the skill set that he did in his back pocket because uh, you don't want to have to rely on other people all the time because you often have to um, make decisions on the fly um, about how you're spending your dollars or how you're allocating resources. And those financial skills are really important. Um, another skill set that I really tap into quite frequently is really my listening skills whether it's um, dealing with our stakeholders or our staff or our visitors or our residents, um, really knowing how to listen to people, when to talk and how to use that information. Um, because we do a lot of gathering of data, um, either through surveys or through interviews or questions. And you have to know how to um, analyze that data, take it in, uh, how to listen to people and, and use it to um, help in, in all your decision making. So I think that's on one side. And, and then you have to have that creative side as well. And I think what makes tourism so and hospitality so unique is you get to use so many like those well-rounded skill sets. It's, it's not like, okay, well, you're going to be analytical or you're going to be um, more expressive or creative. This really takes into consideration all those things. So if you're a well-rounded individual, this is a fantastic industry for you to be in because you get to touch on all those points. And uh, even though I look after the finance and HR side, I also look after programs and visitor services, which touches on a lot of marketing um, and a lot of product development. So there's a lot of requirement to think outside the box, be innovative, uh, know how to build partnerships, um, and know how to uh, be reliable and uh, do some great follow up. So there's a lot of um, elements that are interrelated uh, that you have to kind of keep a lot of balls in the air. So being flexible is another really important skill set. I'm probably overwhelming people, so I don't want to say any more. 
<laughs> no, it's great. I think like kind of what you're saying is almost anybody can kind of fit into this industry. There's so many pieces to it. Like you said, more creative or analytical. Uh, Dermesh, I'm going to throw to you next. Um, what would you say are kind of the main skills that you find uh, are necessary in your position? Well, definitely first and foremost, customer service. And, you know, my, my thing always has been that that's something you can't learn or teach. Um, it's either in you or it's not. Um, I can't force people to smile. Um, but uh, that definitely uh, multitasking. So being able to multitask is key to survival in here. Um, if you're one of those people that, you know, needs to uh, be able to do one thing at a time and not, not get pulled in a different directions, then I, I would honestly say that this is probably not the industry for you. Um, and, but that's, you know, and that's part of the adventure though. Uh, and what makes this career and this industry so great is that, uh, you know, like we said, every day is not the same. Um, so you're not in that same routine every day, but other than that, uh, <clears throat> you know, being open and flexible, um, I found obviously that having worked in every department has made me a better manager. Um, I've, I've worked before and had those managers, especially in hotels where, you know, they think that, uh, being the manager is just all about being the boss and that's it. Um, but being able to understand each department truly helps uh, in communicating with your employees and increasing morale. Um, so Dad, those, those would be my key skills that, uh, that I, would, I would push. What about you, Billy? Yeah, I think I, I have two different perspectives in terms of uh, the, the chef aspect for anybody looking to get into the culinary side of things. Um, I would say, uh, you know, versatility is a really good thing in the sense of um, like be eager to learn new things, but be patient enough to learn them. Uh, that, that, that's it. That's a key thing, you know, depending on the restaurants and stuff that you go into every kind of chef and hospitality experience is a little bit different, uh, in some locations with it, you don't move on to another task until you've mastered it. In some other locations, you're mastering 10 things at one time, which can be very, very difficult. Uh, what I would say is, uh, in, in the hospitality industry, go into things with an open mind, asking lots of questions. If, if you're that person that feels good asking questions, I, I always thought that the industry I grew up in uh, and, and started in, uh, there was almost no such thing as vulnerability. And, and that actually held us back for a lot of years. And asking questions is a really good thing. And being honest and transparent is probably the greatest thing. Why I say this is, is not everybody coming into the industry is new. In fact, a lot of people have worked a lot of other places. And when you're going into a new job application, there's this misconception that because you've maybe worked 10 years in the industry, you should know everything. And that's just not true. Uh, it, it relies a lot on the training programs that you've worked with or been a part of, and they're not all equal. So what I would say to anybody who's like looking to get in this industry is no matter how long you've been in it, or, or if it's your first day, be really transparent with what you know, because that allows who you're working for to start your training in the best possible way that's to you. And it's, you never get into that situation of like, even feeling remotely insecure or underqualified because, because you're going off your resume as opposed to your specific skill set. Um, the other thing that I would say in this, and this would be a piece of advice to uh, everybody in, in our industry is if you possibly can, no matter who you report to, try to never judge a job that you've never done. Because what we've all referenced throughout this entire thing is that we're all people oriented people. In fact, we're all in the business of taking people and no matter how organized our schedules are, the people who have been successful in this industry are always going to prioritize somebody else's needs because that's hospitality. And it's a really weird thing. Like when we think about this, but we can get into some tight roles sometimes whenever we're, we, we get so focused on, on how other people are doing their job than whether like we are just focused on how we can do ours. So really keeping in mind why you want to get into this industry, people, I think have to be up front with it all the time. Um, last thing for the chef side of things is the industry's changed a lot with it. If you're a good storyteller and you can tell your stories as to why your food is really important um, and, and, and serving is same thing, bartending, same thing. If you can explain like the love and passion behind what you're doing, 
uh, you're um, you're going to be able to relate to your guests and have it not be ingredient based, but people based. Uh, so so it, there is a place now for 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 storytelling and there is a place now for explaining the, the decisions behind uh, um, the food. The, the opposite perspective of the different way where I'm doing things right now with it is this is more of a, a senior leadership role from a supporting level. I, I would go as far to say uh, two heightened uh, examples of what we were talking about before is transparency and vulnerability are the key to, to, to leading. And it what I found is a really, really great uh, skill set to be able to do is be vulnerable with your own mistakes you've made throughout this industry because uh, we've all made a lot of them. And, and I, I know that in my career, I've had the best reactions relating to people when I've treated everybody like a human being and I've acted like a, 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 a fallible one myself. So it's uh, um, be patient, forgive yourself for the mistakes and, and remember always, no matter how far you get in this career, why you got into it in the first place because there's a lot of things that can distract you but, yeah. no that's some really great advice i think especially for young students or some young job job seekers looking for that first position is and knowing that it's okay to ask questions it's okay to not know everything uh in your first position or your 10th position um things are still going to come up um, so Kelly, I'm going to jump to you lastly, as somebody who does that uh, hiring and recruiting, um, what does it look like in your field? Uh, what skills are you looking for new uh, candidates to have? A, a great question. And, and you know, it's, although the, the industry has stayed the same, I think that what we, what we're seeing is that there's really, you know, a profile emerging about who's going to be successful in this career today. And, you know, one of the things that uh, we look for is uh, somebody who, who is excited about being, you know, present. And, and, and what I mean about that is not only, you know, at, at work, this is the type of job where, you know, almost all of our work is done in person. I, it's not something that, that uh, you know, can be done at home, right? Um, and so, so we need people that, that will be here, but also in that moment when they're talking either to a guest or to an employee, to a coworker, that they're able to be focused and be, be available for that. So that's one key thing is that we look for uh, when, when we're hiring is, uh, you know, folks that are, that are um, able to be, demonstrate that they're, that they're present there at, uh, in, in the session with us. Um, we also look for people who are, um, I think this is, this is a common theme too, but creative and, and, and I think, you know, if I, if I could say it another way too, is also not so um, rigid in either how they do things or how they think about things. And, you know, it's a great point, Billy, that not everybody we hire is new. Uh, we are, you know, we do hire people that that have experience and that have been in the industry or have worked other places. And, um, and so it's, it's great to hear their skills. And also, you know, when we bring those places, maybe, um, you know, whether we're, 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 we're new to the industry or not, that we may have to change things. And I see that, you know, even people that have been here for 25 plus years, you know, sometimes we do things because that's how we've always done things. But, you know, we need to maybe update or refresh or review or maybe, we, you know, maybe there's a reason why it should change. And so, you know, being flexible and, and willing to adapt. And, and that can mean personally, too. This is an industry where we work um, weekends, we work nights. That's when we're that's when we're busy. We work holidays. And so, you know, people who can be flexible as well personally to uh, to be available for those those time periods too. It's something you kind of have to think about. For example, I, I work on uh, holidays. I, I come in on on Christmas. Um, we celebrate um, on another day, so we celebrate Christmas on the twenty fourth instead. And uh, and so you know in in you know in our our world that means that we're we're still celebrating the holiday. It's just not on that particular day. And so, you know, that's a, a flexibility, an example of, you know, how people need to be, be flexible too. Um, and I think the, the last part is just, you know, willing to learn and um, and also to share what they what people do know. So you know you you've gone to school or you've worked somewhere else or you 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 have something that you're bringing to the table. That's why we, we've hired you. And so you know I want you to to also to share that and not be you know um, um, 
you know, maybe shy, shy to, to demonstrate some of those, those, those key skills too. So, you know, a, a willingness or an eagerness to, to also to, uh, to shine a bit. That, that's, those are some of the key things we look for. Yeah, that's great. Um, so the next piece I wanted to touch on, I know you guys have all kind of mentioned it in some of your other answers, um, but what is something that surprised you when you first entered the industry? So for those that have never worked in the field um, or in the sector, what is something that would really surprise them um, about it? Um, Billy, you got a really big smile on, so I'm going to jump to you first. It, you know, it, this industry is amazing. Like the amount of great people that you meet, the amount of connections, lifelong connections. But I think what I was most surprised about was just like, I think I got into it thinking I was going in to learn a skill and never realized how much of my life uh, it was going to change. You know, we often we've talked about things throughout this presentation and, and throughout this panel. But the truth is, I wouldn't be the person that I am remotely if I hadn't been in this industry. I, I, you know, I, every, a lot of people have known me for the things I've done, but like deep down in my heart, like I was an introvert. Like I wasn't, like, I wasn't the Billy that so many people know, or that see with that this industry, I, I helped me become the person that I am. I it let me work through my mistakes within the industry and was, and was very, uh, in a lot of ways was very supportive of my growing up period. And the interesting thing is I'm 41 years old and still think like I'm growing up. And the interesting aspect of it was, uh, you know, it's so easy to look back at this industry and think it's just a job. But when I look back on it now, uh, and, and I got into it at 16, when I look back in it now, like I wouldn't be who I am without it. And I wouldn't have a lot of the people who have shaped me in my life, good or bad, was as a result of, uh, was as a result of uh, me feeling like I always had people with me in this industry. So there's, so I, I would say that is, I went into the biggest surprise to me is I went into this industry thinking I was going to learn a skill set and never realized how much it truly prepared me for the rest of my life. And these are extremely transferable skills that can work in any aspect of life. So I'd say that was the biggest surprise for me. Yeah, that's great to hear. Uh, Dharmesh, as somebody who started, uh, I think you said at almost six years old, uh, what is something that kind of shocked you early on? Nothing really. I mean, I've been in this for so long that uh, nothing really surprised me anymore. But um... Um, I, I don't know that <laughs> on, on the housekeeping side, there's to, to, you know, some of the people that are that come in, it's just like, do they live like this at home? You know, when you, when you see a room after, a, you know, especially sports teams, it's like, it's like, do their, do their moms not have to clean up like this after every day? But um, oh, it's the moms that are the worst, are <laughs> <laughs> For the moms, it's just about getting away. They just want to like, not have to deal with anything. They want us to make the waffles, which we love to do for the kids. Um, I think, you know, nothing really surprised me, um, but it's, it's a great industry, like I said, and, and uh, it's obviously not going to be for everyone. You know, and when we hire people, we tell them off the bat that uh, this is your first job. Um, no, we don't expect you to be a front desk clerk for the rest of your life. Um, but if you, if you have that aspiration and, and you know, you want to grow, then we will help you grow. Um, some of the best employees that I've had actually, you know, have gone on to become lawyers or pharmacists, whatever, whatever it was that they wanted to do, we made sure we found out and, and accommodated them. Um, so it, it's a great industry for that because, again, it's all about people. So we appreciate that, you know, you have things in your life that need to go on. Um, for us, like one of the things, like when I hire you off the bat, I will ask you up front, you know, do you already have plans in advance that have been made? Because it's not fair to someone to take a job and then say, you know, I've got these tickets that I've, that I've had for like six months to go to a concert. And now the new job I hired says, I got to work weekends. No, we, uh, we like that. And, and uh, as long as you're honest with us, we'll be, we'll be accommodating to you. So um, don't give up on the industry. And the industry is great if you want to get your foot in the door and, and grow, because there's a lot of potential, and especially right now. Yeah, I think that's really great to hear is kind of, um, the stepping stone that it can act as. Um, if it's not the industry for you, there's still a piece that can uh, definitely support you in getting started. Um, and also a great reminder for everyone staying at hotels, be tidy because they'll talk about you. <laughs> 
Uh, Kelly, I'm going to throw to you next. Um, I think something that surprised me um, was was about the relationships that our staff have with uh, guests um, that that have gone on for 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 years and years, where where our you know our guests. Uh, really have a vested <laughs> interest so they they know they know each other right so they you know they know kids or they know you know marriages or they know um uh you know d details like that and and how much of a um how much of an appreciation uh they have for, for each other so you know i think that um uh, Dharmesh talked about you know customer service of course is 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 a key skill here and i think before i worked here i thought of that as sort of the 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 reward was in the moment but what i do see is you know our guests saying you know oh so where is you know so and so you know i haven't seen her in a couple of weeks or i haven't seen her you know in a couple of visits when when you know is, is she coming back or you know where is she and oh she's working in another department oh okay i'll go find her and and um and that's so interesting and exciting uh to me that um to see to see what a what an impact that is and um and what a i guess what a what a um, impact it has uh, for for our guests, also for our employees and and for the business too. It's uh, that was that was a big surprise was how long lasting those those positive moments can be. Mm -hmm. That's really great to hear, kind of those positive interactions that a lot of people can get. Uh, and Lynette, I'll finish off with you. Oh my gosh, there were so many surprises. I, I first started in uh, hospitality uh, out of working at an accounting firm. So I'll tell you, it's very different. You know, I, I would go into work and every day was the same. And I, I used to think like, can I live the rest of my life like this? And no, no offense to anybody who's an accountant, but uh, the answer was no. And I actually applied as a controller at a hotel and uh, whoa was i ever thrown in to uh to a whirlwind and what i was so surprised at is how much autonomy that i had uh from early on and responsibility and the decisions that i would make in uh, have to make in a split second uh that would affect so many people uh really shocked me and you're like oh my gosh i'm 23 years old or i'm 24 years old and i've got you know, 500 lives in this hotel that I'm responsible for, uh, maybe on an overnight shift or during a fire alarm or something like that. And it hits you. It's like, wow, it's a lot of responsibility or that I have 65 mouths. When I was a general manager, I used to think of it. If I had 65 employees. I had 65 families that I was responsible for. And I was the, the difference between whether they were going to drink Kool-Aid or Tropicana orange juice on their breakfast table, right? So it's like, I am a deciding factor in the quality of life somebody else can have. So it's a lot of responsibility and uh, it really hits you, but you take it in stride. And it's like such a rewarding um, industry to be in because I love what Kelly said earlier on that you get to see the direct impact of your results right before your eyes. And no other industry is like that. And um, also something that really surprised me was I learned how to uh, do some minor maintenance repairs pretty quickly because um, that was important if you're a manager on duty and some <laughs> toilet clogs or something happens and or their door lock breaks you've got to go up and and fix it and and uh, one last thing i'll say is i was surprised how many cars can drive through the front doors of a hotel so yeah <laughs> really a story there that we might share for next time. Um, but thank you for that, Lynette. Um, just before we jump to the last question, um, I'm just putting in the chat for all of our attendees, um, just a short feedback survey. It's literally just two questions. Um, just if you can give us some feedback on today's um, event and some uh, insight into what you want to see kind of in our next upcoming events, uh, that's there for you guys. Um, but as we kind of wrap up, I know we've heard a lot of great advice, um, but I'm wondering what's that one piece of advice you have for anybody considering uh, this industry? Dharmesh, I'll start with you. Huh. Best piece of advice? You know, be open to all the challenges um, and don't be afraid of, of uh, stereotyping the industry. It's, it's not stereotypical. I think that we've, we've made that clear today. Um, I think I, I'll, I'll give advice on two fronts. One is to employers is don't just look at the resume, get to know the person, 
just because the resume not re- might not reflect that they've got experience, you know, what we deem to be from our industry doesn't mean that they're not an ideal candidate. Um, and then same thing on the flip side for the employees that are applying, you know, don't be afraid to uh, let us know what it is that you're looking to do. Um, obviously you can't express everything on paper. That one-on-one interaction is key. Uh, and that's why for our, for our interviews, we don't really even look at resumes anymore. Um, we do a job shadowing. So we have you come in and actually see what the position involves and kind of see how you react while you're there. And that's how I've found some of my best employees. Uh, uh, one a quick example I'll give is I had a girl come in uh, and then while, while I was checking people in, I had a lineup, she started talking to people, which kept them occupied and, you know, instead of getting upset that there was a lineup. And the next thing I know, she, was, she had her smart serve. So she was serving people at the bar and uh, I, think, I think that night we did like $500 in sales. She ended up staying like five hours and made like 200 bucks in tips. So, um, you know, it's not a typical interview, but uh, it's not a typical industry. So my advice would be, you know, apply and try. You have nothing to lose. That's great. Uh, Kelly, I'll jump to you next. Um, I think it, um, one piece of advice I would give is that um, it, it, this is a, a, a very exciting different kind of experience you're going to have anywhere. And I think uh, just just tagging on to Dharma, just give it a try. Everything you do here is transferable. So, um, you know, whether you are going into a, an accounting or a marketing or an HR role, uh, or you're doing frontline uh, um, service, all of that will help you uh, whether you decide to stay and, and maybe try something else, or you decide to, to pursue a different career path. And so, um, so in that way, I think that you know everything we do is is a great building block. Um, and so that's one piece of advice: is don't uh, it is to appreciate the the value that uh, that this can have for for your career going forward. And one other piece, I think uh, Billy mentioned about being introverted. I am uh, incredibly introverted too. And so, you know, a piece of advice I would have is don't maybe don't underestimate yourself too. Maybe you know you're not. Uh, typically, uh, uh, you know, someone who likes enjoys being on on stage or, or, or you know, uh, um, with with large crowds or whatever, but uh, don't underestimate that this isn't the right career for you because, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing that uh, uh, what what it can inspire that you maybe didn't even know was was within yourself. So um, that would that would be my advice. Yeah, that's great. I think I definitely experienced that um, as an introvert getting my first job at McDonald's where like rule number one is just keep smiling. Um, you kind of learn to adapt in that way as well. Uh, Lynette, I'll throw to you next. Um, I would say something that I've learned in my many years in this um, industry is don't be afraid to take a risk um, and, and not get too comfortable in a bubble of working in a certain position to get yourself out of your comfort zone and, and try something different, um, and volunteer, uh, be part of a committee, um, learn to make, um, maybe some, some friends in the industry at, uh, with, at other businesses, um, sometimes being volunteering for a sector association or, uh, is a good way and you can have other relationships. Um, you would be surprised at how many job opportunities come from uh, being engaged with the industry. So it doesn't take too much of your time, but you make amazing contacts. You make good friends that you can sometimes vent to share stories um, and there'll be relationships that like that you'll have for a long time. So taking those risks um, and uh, Billy had mentioned this earlier too, but walking a mile in other people's shoes, don't judge in their position. You'd be surprised how much you can find in common with somebody uh, that maybe looks different than you, talks different than you, but when you get down to the heart of it, you all want the same thing. And I would encourage you to really take that risk to uh, learn more about people that you work alongside with and, and develop as many relationships as you can. Yeah, that's a really great point. Uh, and lastly, Billy, I know you've been kind of spewing some great advice this entire time. Do you have anything left for us? Yeah, I, you know, I'd, I'd say to Darmesh's point, adding on with it, I'd say that you would, the person is, is your resume in this industry. I would say your personality is your resume and like what you put out with it. And, and, uh, and that's a really active part because um, we are in the people business. Like we're, we're, we're in the people business taking care of people. And, and interestingly enough about this industry, and, and this is something that often is an oversight, 
This is the only business that brings every single person to you. Like it doesn't matter what career, there's lots of things you can opt out in your life, but everybody eats, everybody drinks, everybody's involved in tourism and hospitality. Everybody's a consumer every day of their life. And this is the only business where if you, if you think you're going into something to learn that skill set, you don't realize all of the other opportunities that are actually coming to you on a daily basis. So to, to Darmesh's point about being a gateway to other things, a, there's not another industry where you will get an opportunity to meet so many different people on a daily basis without even trying. So if you are just working on show, showing your personality and being in a genuine positive aspect in that, in, in that uh, relationship, it, it's impossible for good things to not come to you, like regardless of, even if it's just friendships, it's impossible for good things. So I guess what I would, the, my piece of advice would be is like, don't when while you're learning new skills, don't be afraid to put a little bit of you in that and be you the entire time. The worst thing that you could ever do is compromise yourself to stay in this industry, knowing that this industry isn't right for you. Be you determine if this industry is right for you, because if you have done those two things, you will inherently make this industry better just by being yourself. So. Great. You definitely have more advice than you. <laughs> Um, so thank you all so much for joining us today. Unfortunately, we are now uh, kind of at our time limit, um, but I know everyone either listening live or in the recording is going to get so much great insight from all of this. Um, so thank you so much for joining us. Um, anyone listening today, if you want to learn more about the tourism and hospitality sector, you can read more at workforcewindsorf6.com slash career dash library. There's a ton of information about all of these jobs we've talked about today and the whole full gamut of ones we didn't even get to touch on today. Um, so like I said, we have a quick survey for anyone uh, listening on today. If you want to give us some feedback, that would be great. Um, I know we got a couple comments uh, in the chat box about everyone um, that's on the call today that really enjoyed it. Oh, great. Thank you, Darmesh. A great uh, movie to watch for love, and for love or money. Um, that'll be promoted to everyone there. Um, and again, please don't forget to check out um, some of our past uh, speaker events like this, highlighting careers in healthcare, transportation, and entrepreneurship. Uh, you can see all of those recorded events at workforcewindsoressex.com slash virtual learning events. And again, thank you all for joining us. Thank you to our panelists uh, for sharing such great advice, giving us such great insight into what you guys do every day. Um, it was fantastic to learn from. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thanks, As we everyone. Say in our industry, it's our pleasure. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see you out there, and hopefully, we get to interview some of you someday. Take care, everyone. Yeah, everyone listening, reach out to them if you're in yeah. need. Yes, Have our industry is everyone. hiring. Yes. We need. We need you. <laughs> Here we go. Perfect ad right there. Have a great afternoon, everyone. Bye.